Hey, Hope City, I am so glad that you decided to join us this Easter morning to worship God for who he is and what he has done. He has risen from the dead and he brings us into a living hope. And so we are just so thankful that you are, are here with us. We hope that you're connecting with one another. And uh, if, you, if you've never connected with the uh, Hope City community, we would love for you to uh, fill out uh, our Connect card, which you can go to wearehopecity.com uh, forward slash connect and share any needs or prayer requests that you might have. Just and We'd love to connect with you and, and pray for you, uh, hear from you, and, and ultimately get to know you. And so we hope that you will do that. Uh, before I dive into the message uh, this morning, we want to go ahead and receive our offering at this time. And I just want to thank everybody for your continued generosity. So thankful for that, that we have uh, an opportunity to make a difference uh, in our community, especially uh, at this time where people are really struggling with uh, all kinds of different difficulty. They need uh, the gospel, need to hear uh, of the gospel of grace. And so we're thankful for that. So let me go ahead and pray and uh, we'll receive our offering. Remember that you can give at wearehopecity.com forward slash give. You can also mail in a check if you feel more comfortable doing that, and uh, they're going to share the address on the feed here. Uh, so we're just very thankful for that. Let me go ahead and pray. Father God, thank you for your grace and your love and your mercy for us, God. Uh, we just, we thank you, God, for uh, giving your life on the tree of the cross and uh, raising from the dead on our behalf, God, that we can have uh, a living hope in you. We can have eternal life in you by faith in you. And I pray, God, for each individual and family uh, watching uh, this morning. Uh, Father, I pray your favor and your blessing uh, over them. Father, we, we pray your blessing over all that is given today. God, that you would use it, you would multiply it, and be, it be used for your glory uh, for your honor and praise, we thank you in Christ's name, and amen. All right. Hey, so one of my favorite uh, movies is uh, the movie The Shawshank Redemption. And uh, I'm sure most of you have seen it, so I, I feel confident that by sharing this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but if you haven't seen it, then uh, I guess maybe close your ears up for 30 seconds because uh, uh, I'm going to ruin it for you. Uh, but what it's about is this guy, his name's Andy. He uh, is a, is falsely convicted uh, of a murder that he, that he didn't commit. He spends, uh, gets sentenced to uh, life in prison. And while he's there, he uh, meets up with this guy whose name is Red, becomes like his best bud in there. And uh, they do decades uh, of time together. And uh, Andy ultimately is able to escape. Uh, and before he escapes, though, he tells Red, he says, Hey, Red, if you ever get out of here, uh, I want you to come find me. And he tells him about this place uh, that he wants him to go to if he ever gets out. And um, ultimately, Andy escapes. And uh, Red finally, uh, years later, gets out uh, of prison. And uh, Red sort of goes about his business and uh, doing life, but he's having a real hard time because he's been locked up for so long. In fact, Red finds himself in a place where he's just incredibly depressed. He's ready to take his life. Um, he, he, he's just filled with, with depression. He's depressed and, and hopeless. And he remembers when Andy uh, told him that if he ever were to get out to come find him, to go to this particular place. And so Red goes uh, to this place and he finds this, this box and in it is, is a letter and that he writes that Andy had written to Red and, and uh, Red reads it and, and near the end of it, uh, he says, it says this, it says, Red, never forget that hope is a good thing and maybe the best of things. And a good thing never dies. That hope is maybe the best of things. Now, why is that? Why would somebody say that, that hope is, is, is the best of things? I think we can all relate to the, to the truth that um, hope is, is the best of things. Because no matter what it is that you go through, as long as you have hope, you're going to make it through that you can go through anything, no matter what the struggle, no matter what the trial, no matter what the difficulty, if you have hope, you can make it. 
But when you get to a place in life where you're hopeless, where you, you have no hope, it's, it's miserable. You don't know how you're going get, to get through. And so hope is the best, uh, really, of, of all things. Now, the good news today that we celebrate on Easter is this, that because of the resurrection, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, because of the resurrection, you never have to live one moment in this life without hope. We have a hope that, that no matter what it is we go through, no matter what difficulty that we're experiencing now or anywhere in the future, because of the resurrection, you will always have hope. that You are going to make it through. Now, one of the ways that we see that in Scripture is from the Apostle Peter, and he writes uh, about this in, in 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. And we're going to look at this in, in, just, a, in just a minute. Um, but Peter is, is writing to this, to this church uh, in Asia Minor that is going through a really, really difficult time, is, is really struggling. And Peter writes them to remind them of uh, their hope. In fact, he says this in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 6. It says, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. So it says that Peter is saying that I know that, that you're, you're grieved and you're going through these trials. To be grieved is they, they have this deep sense of, of sorrow and, and burden upon them. They're, they're finding themselves in this, this place of practical hopelessness and it's because it says that you've been grieved by various trials they're going through all kinds of, of different trials now we know that the the roman empire is is beginning to persecute them and and killing many of them um, but really we they're going through many different types of trials in fact if you read throughout first peter and in in the second peter uh, we we see that there he's writing to them about a whole bunch of different things that they're they're struggling with anything from uh man difficulty in, in their marriage in, in their relationships with their with their bosses with sexual sin uh, just learning how to respond in love uh, to others and in, in uh, through the difficulty uh, th that they're in uh, backsliding into a former way uh, of life that maybe they had uh, gained some freedom from they're they're beginning to backslide and Peter is is writing them in this letter to comfort them to remind them of the hope that they have uh, in the resurrection now I know that that uh, many of us tuning in today and watching this uh, you can relate to to the fact that you got some struggles you got some grieving you got some sorrow you got some burden upon you and you're going through some difficulty that 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 you don't know necessarily how you, you're gonna get through right I mean especially with this pandemic uh, we're we're going through financial difficulties uh, difficulties with our with work and in bosses and uh, even the healthiest of marriages right it being like sheltered in place like we're learning how to stay in close quarters uh, for this length of time and uh, many people are struggling just isolated um, alone they don't have the relationships that, that we were made for and that are, that are so crucial uh, to our lives that we're feeling alone and man there, there's a, so many different struggles there's uh, people are backsliding into sin that that they've been freed from uh, previously and so we can relate to this while while we're not experiencing the persecution right certainly that that they were in this church that Peter is writing to there's a lot of us that are struggling particularly in uh, this this situation but Peter says listen you have a hope. There, there is a hope that we can, uh, that in, in this grieving. In fact, uh, he tells us in verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's saying that because Jesus has resurrected, that in this uh, in this situation, 
that, that you can actually greatly rejoice. In fact, right in verse 6, he, he, say, he says that, that uh, in this we, we greatly rejoice. But he tells us that we can rejoice, which, which seems pretty insensitive for him to say, right? But he says that because Jesus is alive, we have this hope, even in the situation that we are in. Now, the Apostle Peter is somebody that um, I feel like he's most qualified, probably, uh, to, to, to say, to, to challenge us with the reality that we have a hope, even though we are in a place of trial, no matter what that trial uh, is, because Peter knows of the hope in the midst of, of so many trials, really. In fact, Peter uh, was was this guy who constantly right was putting himself out there uh, as to Jesus about man I'm tough I'm bold I'm faithful uh, you can depend on me I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you and and so on and so forth uh, but yet Peter is also the one that failed him over and over again right even after saying that he never would. In fact, we know in the Garden of Gethsemane, this is the night before the night before Jesus is crucified. Jesus goes out to the garden uh, with uh, a few of his disciples. Peter is one of them, and, and he says, "Hey, I'm going to go over here and pray." Right? This is the night before. This is actually the night he, like he's arrested, uh, and he says, "I just," he says to Peter and the disciples, "I just want you to to pray here with me. Stay here and pray with me." And of course, Jesus goes into the garden and, and he begins to pray and he, he comes back after a while and Peter is sound asleep. In fact, that happens repeatedly. He just says, just stay up with me. But yet Peter fails him. In fact, after Jesus is arrested, um, this, you know, Jesus has taught Peter over and over again to, to, to love uh, others, right? To be sacrificial, to care more about others than himself, to... to uh, to give his life, right, so that others can live. And, and, and Jesus, when he's arrested and the soldiers are coming, what does Peter do? He pulls out a sword, you know, whacks this guy's ear off. And, to, and Jesus has to, like, heal this dude's ear because Peter has responded this way. He's, he's failed a, again. In fact, Peter told Jesus that he'd never leave him, that he, he would never deny him. But yet, after Jesus is arrested, and Peter is, is questioned and confronted about, hey, don't you know him? It says that Peter denied him three times, to the point where he actually, the third time, it says that he just wept bitterly. He, he just was just hopeless in that moment. He just wept bitterly to the point where it's, the scripture says that, that Peter like took off. It says that he went out fishing again, right? After Jesus is crucified, Peter, Peter goes back to fishing. And it says, though, in, in the Gospel of John that, that, that Peter, having left and deserted, right, that, that mission, he, he goes out fishing and, and it says the sun rises and he sees Jesus on the beach, and I, and I would think, he, you know, Peter, he, it says he jumps in the water and he swims back to Jesus on the beach where, where, where Jesus restores him, re it re puts him back into to his mission, his purpose. And I have to think that, that Peter in this moment has got to be thinking to himself that, you know what, I have failed Jesus, but Jesus has never failed me. That I, I gave up on Jesus, but Jesus has never given up on me. Peter's got to be experiencing in this moment that no matter how dark, no matter how difficult, no matter how hard the trial, Jesus will never leave you. You always have hope. You may feel alone, but there is another in the fire with you. That Jesus will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And because of that, we have hope. And we always have hope, no matter what it is that we're in, because of the resurrection. 
Now, why is it that we have this hope? Because of the resurrection. Peter actually, he tells us in, uh, watch in verse 3, right? He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He says, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Peter says that the reason why we have this living hope in the resurrection is because in the because of the resurrection we have an inheritance that we have something to look forward to that is greater that is bigger than anything that we could possibly be going through in fact what we have to look forward to is so incredible it's so great that it just minimizes everything that that we're going through right now no matter what difficulty we could experience it sort of reminds me of um in different times when I've talked to some students, right, um, that are just, you know, and I and I know what it's like to be in high school, right? But like to be in high school, and, you, and you, like when when classmates are just being uh, horribly cruel, and I, I think kids can be the cruelest of all. Um, but oftentimes, right uh, in high school, we just begin to think it's the end of the world and what's happening. And I've, I've talked to students, right. And I, and I'm try I want to convince them in this moment. I want them to see that. I, I wish that you could see that like, even in five years, just even a couple years, but especially several years after high school, like you'll realize that none of this matters, that the things that we begin to make so important, right. In high school, we begin to learn very quickly, man, none of that mattered. It's like Peter is saying to us right now that don't you see so much of what you're making so important right now just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter that there is an inheritance, that there is something so great in your future that it's a hope in your future that impacts your life right now. That we have an, an inheritance, a heavenly inheritance in heaven. It's kept for us, right? It's guarded for us, he tells us in verse 4. Now, we, I know we begin to think to ourselves, like, man, like, you know, at least I do. Like, what is heaven going to be like, right? We think of, like, you know, like, what incredible house or, like, man, heaven is going to be like this island um, uh, or on a beach, right, on some island or, or so on. To be honest with you, I often think to myself, like, I wonder what we're going to eat in heaven, <laughs> I, I wonder what I wonder what we'll have for dinner in, in heaven. I wonder what a, a Reese's peanut butter cup will taste like in heaven. If it's this great now, if it feels like heaven now, then what, what is it going to be like uh, when we're finally in heaven, right? Uh, but but Peter is saying, man, there is something so incredible that it's it's imperishable, it's undefiled. It's unfaded and it's kept and it's carted for us. Now, what does he mean when he says that it's imperishable? Well, when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose imperishable, meaning to never die again. And that when Jesus rose from the dead, uh, the apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 that, that he's the first fruits, right? He's the first fruits of those who have died, of, of Christians who have, have died, who he actually says who have fallen asleep. What that means is that we have an inheritance that's imperishable, that, that someday when we die, in fact, like a, a Christian is often um, described as somebody who is just falling asleep because when we die, we're just going to wake up in the presence of God. And in that moment, right, we, we will we will be at peace, we'll be perfectly whole, to all in, totally healthy, never to experience any kind of hardship ever again, right? That means that someday there's going to be no wheelchairs, right? No reading glasses, no viruses, no ventilators, no cancer, no lupus, no antidepressants, right? Uh, no more crutches, no more weight gain, no more bad backs, right? There, it's, we're going to be totally healthy, no more difficulty, no more hardship, no more tears, no more anger, 
right? We will be whole in the presence of God. And Peter is saying that it's going to be so amazing. You might as well get the party started right now. Get the party started now that it impacts our future inheritance, our hope uh, is it, that we have to look forward to is so incredible that it impacts how we live now, right? Imagine if there were two guys I go to and I say, hey, look, guys, I want you to go out on that like sand dune and I want you to dig holes in that dirt and that sand. I just want you to dig over uh, every single day, 10, 12 hours a day. And, and uh, But don't worry, after working 10, 12 hours a day for a year, I want you to do that for a year. But after that year, you know, to the one guy I say, I'm going to give you five grand a year. The other guy, I, I tell him, hey, you know what? At the end of that year, working 10, 12 hours a day, digging sand, feels like drudgery, feels like hardship, right? It just feels like you're getting nowhere. At the end of that, I'll give you a billion dollars. Now, listen. Both of them, when they go to dig those holes in that sand and it feels like they're getting nowhere, it's just back-breaking work, 10, 12 hours a day, right? I asked one of the, the guy that is getting five grand at the end of the year, I say, hey, how was your day, right? He, what is he going to say? It was horrible, absolutely horrible. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I, 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 it's just, it's terrible. I don't know how I'm going to get through. I say to the guy who's going to get the billion dollars at the end of the year, done the same exact work. I say, hey, how was, how was your day? How was the work? Ah, wasn't the best, but you know what? We're going to make it. Not too bad. I'll push through. I'm going to get there, making my way, right? Two totally different responses. Why? They're doing the same work, living the same life, but it's because of what? Their hope is. It's because of what their future is. It's because of what they're looking forward to, right? Peter says, listen, you have an inheritance that's imperishable. One that is, he says, is undefiled. What does it mean that our inheritance is undefiled? That means that there will never, there will be this time when, right, when we go to be in the presence of God, that we will be completely without sin. We will no longer have any struggle with sin. That means no more guilt, no more shame. It'll be the first time that we ever can fully love God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our strength, right? That I can finally live and I can experience in that moment what I was always created to experience, the full presence of God. Because the resurrection has set us free from sin and death. You see, because of the resurrection that sin and death have no power over me. It has no power over us. You know, when we commit a crime that suddenly, as many of you know, and I do, that the uh, jail system has authority over you. You commit a crime and now you are, they have authority, they have power, they have, bond, there's a bondage over your life because you have committed this crime because you're guilty of this, this crime. You're guilty of this thing. But listen, when your sentence is up, when you have served the punishment that has bondage and power over you, when you have served it, you're set free. They got to let you go. And once that punishment is up, you know what? You are, you're free. It has no power. Listen, Jesus, when he resurrected, when he paid our sin debt, when he paid the punishment for our crime, for our sin upon the cross, when he rose from the dead, he was set free. And in him, because our punishment has been fulfilled and that he rose from the dead, we are set free. It means that sin and death has no more power, has no more authority. We are no longer under the bondage of death. That is so powerful in our lives because that means that, you know what? That, that death can only uh, help us, right? It only takes us to a place that it makes us greater than we even are today. So Peter says that it's imperishable. It's Un, it's undefiled. It's it's unfading. That means it can never uh, diminish, and 
it, it can never be lost, that it's secure, it's kept, it's, it's guarded for us. It's something that we can never lose. It's something that will always keep us secure. Now listen, every other hope, every other thing that you can hope in in this world is going to let us down. Everything is going to fade. Everything is going to perish. Everything is going to die, right? Everything will ultimately that we hope in will leave us empty. It'll leave us insecure. And that's, that's because everything is falling apart. It's not living. It's we're actually dying, right? We, we know this, that like everything, like our bodies are falling apart right now. My body is, is falling apart right now. Gravity always wins, right? We could say everything's going down, right? I mean, we know this to be true. We experience this. Now, we often deny this. It's hard to accept. We try to pretend like it's not happening. And maybe if you're young enough out there, you'd be, you're saying to yourself, yeah, it doesn't really feel like that. Uh, it, it can be hard to accept, but listen, it's happening. Everything we hope in is, is falling apart. Now, listen, there's this, uh, I know in my own life, I, I'm experiencing this. Uh, I, I, I've said to a, a friend of mine who's actually an elder uh, in our church at Hope City, his name's Paul, and he's an, he's an eye doctor. And uh, uh, a number of months ago, I, I was saying to him, I said, hey, you know, um, I'm having a real hard time focusing, you know, in my eyes. I said, you know, uh, the TV will be on or something, and I, I may be reading something. And, and, uh, and when I look up at the TV, it's blurry. Like, it's taken me forever to focus. I think something's wrong with my eyes. He said to me, he said, you know, you need to get your eye, you know, come get your eyes checked out. I think you need readers. You, you need reading that. You need readers. I'm thinking, readers? What, what? You know, now there's something wrong. With, something's going on with my eyes, you know? A uh, few weeks later, I messaged him and, and uh, I was telling him that, you know, man, I think it's one eye because, like, if I cover up my one eye, like, I see really good out of this. But, man, when I cover it, I think the reason why I'm having trouble focusing is because my one eye is going bad. And I'm messaging him this, you know. He messages back and he says, you need to come get your eyes checked out. You need readers, you know. And I'm thinking, readers? Why does he, like, there's something wrong with my eye, you know? There's something wrong with my eyes. I, I don't know. And, and uh, so, I, of course, I'm researching. I'm thinking to myself, you know, I, there's got to be something more going on. And so I'm doing some research, and, and uh, I'm thinking, man, it, it, maybe it's because of my blood sugar. Maybe there's something in my blood sugar. I mean, you know, my diet isn't the greatest. You know, maybe there's something uh, in my blood sugar that's making one of my eyes go bad. I'm not diabetic, so I'm messaging, and I say, Paul, you know, uh, is you think that maybe something could be wrong with with my my blood sugar? You know, I know I need to eat better. How much can uh, uh, you know your blood sugar impact your eyes if even if you're not diabetic? He he messaged back. He said you're 45. You you're you're falling apart. <laughs> I don't know why you're having such a problem with this. You know, and I I thought to myself, man, like. Just, I don't want to come to grips with the reality. Like, there's got to be something else wrong. Just that I'm getting old. I'm, I'm 45 years old. And my my eyes, right, are, 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 are diminishing. My eyes are, are falling apart. Of course, I still haven't gone and gotten that uh, eye test done. But listen, we it's hard for us to accept it. But everything that we hope in, Everything that we put our hope in, in this world, apart from God, apart from Jesus, is going to let us down. Everything. Everything. Now, right now, you might be hoping in something and it feels like it's bringing some security. But listen, it's going to perish on you. It's going to, to let you down. I don't care where you, what bank you have your, your money in. I don't care what bank it's stored in. That bank is going out of business. Every, every business is going to lay people off. Every business is, is going to dissolve. Every bottle is going to come up empty. Every drug is going to run out. Every person is ultimately going to let you down. I know that that's hard for me to hear. It's hard for us to hear. 
but every person is, is going to succumb to death. The question is, are you going to live again? Are you going to live? Are you going to be resurrected with Jesus? Are you going to have an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, that is undefeating, uh, an inheritance that will never let us down, an, an inheritance that gives us the security, that can give us the, the living hope that we need, something that we can hold on to, that, that we can grasp onto. Listen, the hope that we have in the resurrection is the hope that we need. It's the only dependable hope. Jesus Christ is the only living hope. 2,000 years ago, the tomb was empty, but the throne is filled. God in Jesus is in control. This isn't just wishful thinking or some superstition. 2,000 years ago, that tomb was empty. And it changes everything. In fact, you know that, that hope, that word hope in the Hebrew comes, the same root word for hope in the Hebrew, it, it, it's what they translate uh, cord, the word cord, meaning it's something, you can, hope is something you can grab it's something you can hold on to. It's something we can grasp even when times are so difficult that we don't know how we're going to get through that we can hold on to Jesus because he has hold of us. We're guarded. We're kept. That inheritance is kept guarded for us. We can expect that. We can expect uh, what God is doing for us, right? That he is here with us, that we aren't alone even when it may feel like that. Because of the resurrection, you and I never have to live one moment in this life without hope. Never, not one moment, no matter what the trial, no matter what the difficulty, no matter what the hardship, we're gonna make it through. The scripture says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, that you can be saved, that you can be assured of that same inheritance of eternal life, that, that, that living hope that you can have now because of what you know is in store for us. You can have that deep confidence in your heart and assurance that blessing awaits you. Now, you know, an inheritance is something that is received. It's not something you earn. See, the inheritance that we have waiting for us as Christians is something that only comes by grace. It's something that we're told has to be received by faith. Faith in the, the reality that Jesus died on that cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And he rose from the dead because God accepted that payment on our behalf. That we admit that we need him. That we believe that what Jesus did is sufficient for us. And then we commit to, to turning away, to, to letting go of the things in this world that we, we put our hope in. And placing our hope entirely in Jesus Christ. Grace alone, by faith alone. That's something we, we have to, in order to live with that hope, you have to have faith in Christ. And so before we, we worship in song here, I, I want to encourage you that if, if you've never prayed to God uh, and just confessed, your, your need for him and your need for forgiveness and your need for a hope greater than anything that this world can offer. I pray that you do that now and you ask God for that gift of faith. Say, God, I believe, but help my unbelief. And that you can have the same assurance. You can begin to live with that same hope because you're not alone. There are a whole lot of others that are living with that hope, even in the, the worst of times, even in the worst of these difficulties. And I'd love for you to live with that same hope. I hope that you're strengthened in your faith.
There's many others who are living with that, and we want to share just for a few minutes before we worship in this, this song about the hope that others have in, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we hope that that encourages you and it calls us and challenges us to believe and trust in Christ alone. Let me pray. Father God in heaven, Father, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for raising from the dead. We thank you that you are alive. And God, we, we pray that you continue to reveal that to us, that we would live with that hope and that we would detach from the things in this world, God, that ultimately leave us uh, empty and perishing and trust in you. God, uh, I pray that uh, in this moment as we worship you in song, that, that we would be called to, to, to that faith and that anybody who doesn't know you, God, that, that you would place that burden in their heart to just get on their knees and they're maybe not physically, maybe they can't physically, God, but, but get on their knees in their heart and just surrender to you. You give them this gift of faith. In Christ's name I pray and amen. Jesus has shown me time and time again that I can completely and fully put my trust in him. And having him to trust during a season of uncertainty and confusion is bringing me so much peace and joy and hope for not only this season, but also for what's to come. Oliver, why is Jesus your living hope? Because if he re rose from the dead, that means he can do anything. What about you, Eliza? He died for everybody. Jesus is my living hope because he's always good and always faithful, and we can count on him in every season. I have hope in Jesus this season because of the death on the cross and his resurrection that has covered my sins. I have now got a relationship um, with Jesus um, and with God through that death and resurrection. And then also I have eternal life that allows me to have the peace uh, during this season that I can be with Jesus and God forever. So I'm gonna live in that peace during this season. And I have hope in this season because of Jesus's life, his death and his resurrection that that brought me into a right relationship with him. And because of that personal relationship that I now have with God, I can have peace and joy in my life, that I am not defined by the things that I've done, but my identity is in who God says that I am. God has been our living hope in this season because we just know that he is our father and we are all his children. And as a father, we know that he is never abandoning us and he's never forsaking us. And even in times like these, he is always right next to us and he is continuing to take care of us. Right, Noah? Amen. I have hope in Jesus knowing that he died on the cross for me and um, that he rose on the third day and that he is sitting up in heaven at the right hand of God and I can rest assured that he is ultimately in control at this time and I have peace knowing that he is, that he is still king and he still reigns and that's, that's my hope. Um, because Jesus resurrected and that means he's alive. Because Jesus is alive. <laughs> When I think of living hope, I think of the aspect of what Jesus offers us when he says that he offers us peace. And I think that's really comforting right now when things just seem out of control and just knowing that Jesus offers us a peace that, that transcends our understanding and it gives us hope. Uh, Jess, what do you think of? I think of in John 6, after Jesus has said a whole bunch of really hard things um, and a whole bunch of people have walked away, he turns to the disciples and says, are, are you too? What about you? Are you guys going to walk away too? And Peter says, where else are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. And that is, is what gives me hope, that commitment of, I trust you, Jesus, your faithfulness, the words that you have spoken, um, and your promises. I, I am I'm basing everything on this, on you. That is, that is my hope. I have hope through Jesus this season um, because of his ultimate victory over sin and death on the cross. Um, that allows me to overcome the fear and anxiety in my life because um, that gives me peace uh, through that victory. And that victory allows me to 
have that piece as an anchor um, in uncertain times like these. Yeah, uh, I have hope in Jesus because I look to God's word and I see how he has always remained so faithful to his people. He's loved and cared for them. Even when they faced some of the worst situations imaginable, God always brought his people through those tough seasons. And I know that God is gonna bring me and us through this difficult season as well because he's trustworthy and his character never changes. You know, Jesus has been our living hope in the season, especially when it comes to our finances. You know, as many of us have lost our job or have been reduced to very minimum workloads, it can it can it can certainly be, you know, a challenge. A ch- a challenge yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, a challenge to stay focused on the word and to remember that, you know, no matter what, he's got this. It's, I'll tell you, it's been a struggle the last few weeks to get used to our new normal, but, you know, remembering what Jesus has done simply does take that worry away. I know that at least since we've been married, no matter what happens in our life, we have always been okay financially. And we have always, by the grace of God, had enough. That's right. You know, I remember, you know, a few years ago when I lost my job and you know, somehow all of our bills were paid. We got the random checks in the mail and it was it was just truly a big blessing from God. You know, so instead of being fearful of where our next buck is coming from, we're simply going to have that eager and confident expectation that, you know, Jesus is for us. He will never leave us and that he lives inside of us. That truly is our living hope. Hey, if you've believed maybe for the very first time, that Jesus was crucified and he rose from the dead uh, and you've placed your faith in him, we would love to connect with you. We would love to walk with you, uh, teach you, help you and what it means to to live in the hope that Jesus gives us uh, through the resurrection, to be able to live in the hope of the inheritance uh, that we have. Maybe you've committed your life uh, to God, again, you've sort of recommitted, you've, you've walked away, but today you're surrendering up and saying, God, I want to live for you. We'd love to connect with you as well. Uh, on the news feed, on this, on this stream, you can just go ahead and even comment on the stream. Say, hey, you know what? I surrendered. I raised the white flag. Uh, I, I want to commit my life to God. I need some help. I'd, I'd love to be taught uh, how to live with that kind of hope. I want what you have. Just go ahead and comment that uh, on, on the feed um, or maybe even private message uh, us through Facebook. There's a pastor who's online right now that you can connect with. Um, you can also uh, you know shoot us an email or uh, go to wearehopecity.com forward slash connect. Fill that out. Somebody will get in touch with you. Uh, but we would love to just walk with you and hear from you. Praise God with you and uh, help you to live with that hope that comes through uh, the resurrection. If you're a Christian here today and uh, maybe you haven't just recommitted, but I hope you've been bolstered in your, your faith, that you have a courageous faith, a big faith. Uh, as we continue through this trial uh, that, that we're in the midst of, um, I pray that God would bless you and keep you in that, that, that you would know that his favor is with you and, and that you would have that strength that comes through faith and knowing that Jesus has risen from the dead. just want to wish you a happy Easter um, and uh, pray that you live with that living hope. Next week, uh, at 10 a.m. for our live stream, we're going to begin a new uh, message series entitled Hope in Exile. And uh, man, all throughout history, God's people have uh, lived scattered and about not being able to gather together like they want to, but they've been able to do it with, with hope. And, and so while we might not be in the same type of exile that God's people have been at particular points uh, in, the, in the past in the scriptures, Um, we do want to learn something, how they had courage and they had hope in the midst of that, even in the exile that it feels like we're in now. So we hope that you join us uh, next week uh, at 10 a.m. for for, uh, uh, the Hope in Exile uh, message series. And uh, until then, let me go ahead and pray. Father God in heaven, Father, we thank you 
for your grace. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you for giving your son on the tree of the cross. And we pray that, uh, that we would live with that hope that the resurrection brings. God, in this moment, I want to pray over every single person in this world who is sick, uh, who is hurting. Uh, Father, especially those who right now are suffering with this virus that's out there. Father, we ask for your protection and favor over those individuals who are working on the front lines in the hospitals, as doctors, as nurses, as every essential worker for every business that is out there, God. I, we thank you for them. We thank you for uh, their, their willingness to sacrifice uh, their time, risk themselves so that we can live right now in comfort as we even worship online, God. We we thank you for that, God. We, we pray uh, over all those individuals. We pray over every family, every individual who uh, is, is suffering right now and in isolation, who feels alone. Uh, Father, I pray that you would give them a deep sense of um, your presence and your comfort that only comes through your Holy Spirit, God, uh, that, that they would know that they are not alone. Uh, that there is another in the fire, God, with them. And uh, Father, we pray over every financial difficulty, every hardship that is out there. We pray over the businesses, over our economy. We pray for uh, our leaders, God, that you give them wisdom. God, we, we, uh, we thank you that you have been gracious to us. We praise you for raising from the dead that you are alive. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Have an incredible week, you guys.